Hello, today we will discuss a problem called Brachistochon problem, which was given by Bernoulli in 1626, which says that if a particle of mass m goes from point A to point B under the influence of gravity, which path this particle should choose in coming from A to B, so that it takes minimum time in reaching to the point B. So uh, alternatively this can be put forward in this fashion that suppose there are infinite number of paths possible in coming from A to B under the influence of gravity which one is the path according along which the time taken would be minimum. So to solve this problem we will use the method of calculus of variation which is uh, a method used in calculus to solve the such kind of problems and the equation that we get by adopting this method is called Euler Lagrange equation. Which is as this d over dx del f over del y prime minus del f del y equal to 0 where f is a functional this is a function of x y y prime functional in mathematics is loosely speaking is a function of function so y is a itself is a function of x and f is a function of x y and y prime where y prime is the dy by dx okay so we will use this equation to solve this problem the first of all we'll have to find out we have to calculate what is the time taken in coming from point a to point b so for that we know that the distance between two very close uh, points which are infinitesimally close to each other is under root dx square plus dy square which is equal to dy under root 1 plus uh, sorry dx uh, and 1 plus y prime square okay now the time taken from point a to point b will be the this distance suppose we want to find out the time taken time taken in traveling distance equal to ds So that will be dt equal to ds over v. All right. Now to, uh, to solve this problem, we have to extremize actually this integral, which is from x equal to 0 to point A. For example, if I take this position of particle at point A to B origin, 0 comma 0, and this is suppose A comma B. Okay. So this is suppose my x-axis and this is our y-axis so the integral that we have to actually extremize comes to be uh, becomes ds over v which is equal to 0 to a dx under root 1 plus y prime square divided by velocity now the question is what is y in terms of what is v in terms of y and y prime or other thing now uh, to find out that we have to use the uh, conservation of energy principle. Suppose we, I take two points, point let's say P and Q, uh, where P uh, is suppose uh, let's say a po which having the co the point which is having the coordinates x comma y x, and this is suppose uh, some uh, zero comma zero etc. Okay, so we apply the energy conservation principle to find out the relation between v and y. So for that, so total energy at point one, which is p, is equal to the total energy at point two, which is equal to q. So that will be half m v square plus zero is equal to zero plus m g y x. Okay, where y x I have taken the height of this point from the reference level of potential energy where we count the potential energy is 0 and the kinetic energy was 0 here because it was at rest that's why it is 0 and the potential energy mgyx and uh, the kinetic energy had become at point q is let's say half mv square and the potential energy is suppose 0 here okay 
what we see from this equation that v is equal to under root 2g y x okay so now if we put this value back in this equation 1 so what we get is i equals uh, under root uh, 0 to a uh, under root 2g which is constant uh, dx under root 1 plus y square upon under root y okay fine so now if we remember our method of uh, 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 of, if we remember the, our uh, calculus of variation chapter that this is the functional which we have to extremize to solve this problem for example euler lagrange equations were obtained by extremizing this integral okay so now we, uh, we will have to apply the euler lagrange equation now we have to calculate these terms so we will calculate these terms separately and then uh, we will put them back into this equation to find out which path is that uh, along which that particle of mass m will take minimum time in reaching from a to b under the influence of gravity okay so let's do that so our f is uh, under root 1 plus y prime square divided by under root y okay so del f by del y is equal to under root 1 plus y prime square minus half y to the power minus 3 by 2 and del f by del y prime is a partial derivative so y prime uh, with respect to y prime y will be treated as constant so this is under root y and half under root 1 plus y prime square and twice of y prime okay which is equal to which is equal to y prime upon under root y into under root 1 plus y prime square okay now next uh, thing that we have to calculate is derivative of this thing with respect to x so let's do that so now the next term that we have to calculate is the derivative of this thing del f by del y prime with respect to x which is d over dx del f by del y prime this that equal to that equal to this is going to be a long expression y y 1 plus y prime square under root y under root 1 plus y prime square okay y double prime minus y prime okay and uh, under root y half of under root 1 plus y prime square into 2 y prime into y double prime okay minus uh, y prime into 1 plus y prime square half of under root y into y prime that is a expression for this okay so now uh, we will apply the Euler Lagrange equation so we'll put these values into this equation so we'll put these values sorry this is del y del f by del y so we have we'll put these values del of del f by del y and this d by dx of del f by del y prime into this equation okay so let's do that so I will write down this value here del f by del y is equal to under root 1 plus y prime square ok let's, let's do that so d by dx of del f by del y prime I can rewrite this term so this will become y double prime under root under root y under root 1 plus y prime square 
minus y prime square this two will cancel this two and this will become y prime square y double prime under root y upon y into 1 plus y prime square to power 3 by 2 okay minus minus y prime square okay and this is 2 y to the power 3 by 2 and under root 1 plus y prime square so similarly i can write this under root y and get rid of this under root y here minus of which minus minus will become plus half under root 1 plus y prime square into y to the power minus 3 by 2 is equal to 0 okay so now uh, let's multiply by under root y and um, under root 1 plus y prime square so this will become y double prime minus y double prime y prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square minus y prime square divided by 2 y plus equal to 0. Hmm. So from this step, uh, we have will take we will multiply by 2y into 1 plus y prime square, and let's see what we get. 2y 1 plus y prime square into y double prime minus 2y into y double prime y prime square hmm, minus y prime square into 1 plus y prime square plus um, 1 plus y prime square uh, square square is equal to 0 okay so let's uh, rearrange these terms this is 2y y double prime plus 2 y y prime square y double prime minus 2 y y double prime y prime square minus y prime square minus y prime to the power 4 plus 1 plus y prime to the power 4 plus 2 y prime square is equal to 0 okay so we see that these two terms exactly cancel out each other okay so this uh, cancels out each other uh, similarly uh, these two terms cancels out each other and what we are left with the following 2y y double prime minus and there is a plus here so plus y prime square plus 1 equals 0 so this is the thing that we get so if I multiply with this entire equation by y prime, so this will become y prime q plus 2y y prime y double prime plus y prime is equal to 0. This equation can be written as dy dx of y plus y y prime square is equal to 0. Which means this signifies or this implies that y plus y y prime square is actually a constant that's the c1 but this is a constant with respect to x respect to x okay so this is what we get which can be rewritten as further y prime square is equal to c1 minus y upon y okay and uh, which means y prime is equal to our half now we have to solve this equation this is a first order differential equation that has to be solved which can be solved by variable separable 
as follows y prime is dy by dx this is equal to c1 minus y upon y to the power half okay so let's uh, solve this equation so this equation so we have to solve this equation dy by dx is equal to c1 minus y upon y to the power half which is equal to uh, dy into under root y upon c1 minus y is equal to dx now integrating both sides under root y under root c1 minus y dy is equal to x plus some other constant of integration which is c2 all right so let's solve this the left hand side and uh, for that we'll have to put so y is equal to let's say c1 uh, sine square theta we have theta we are taking from let's say 0 to pi by 2 in the first quadrant so suppose because we have fixed our problem in the first quadrant so let's see if i solve this portion under root y upon under root c1 minus y that will be equal to under this c1 sine square theta divided by c1 cos square theta which means under 10 theta okay right so the left hand side will become the left hand side will become uh, uh, 10 theta and dy will become c1 2 sine theta cos theta d theta is equal to x plus c2 all right so this will 2 c1 sine this 10 theta can be written as sine theta over cos theta cos theta will cancel out cos theta so this will become 2 c1 sine square theta d theta is equal to x plus c2 this 2 can be absorbed here 2 sine square theta d theta x plus c2 and 2 sine square theta can be further written as 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta x plus c2 and uh, this can be integrated out and that will become c1 into theta minus c1 cos 2 theta integration of cos 2 theta will be sine 2 theta upon 2 is equal to x plus c2 okay so x would be we will bring c to the, this side this will be our x similarly uh, we can uh, solve for y that's what we get for x x is a function of theta so theta becomes a parameter here y is c1 sine square theta so this can be written as half of uh, c1 into 1 minus cos 2 theta okay. so now we get both x and y in terms of theta so this set of equation actually represent a curve which is known as cycloid 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 is a curve for example you can think suppose there is a particle on the rim of wheel of a cycle and cycle is moving forward in x direction with certain velocity and, and the wheel is also rotating so now the trajectory traversed by that particle which is on the rim and uh, that is moving forward also and that is rotating also so that the path that they travel is actually cycloid so what we have seen the, uh, the solution of Brachistogon problem are actually the cycloid. It means the particle, the path that it takes from re uh, reaching A to point B in, uh, under the influence of gravity is not the straight line as it could be uh, thought of in the at the first place because straight lines are generally involved, uh, involved in traveling the least distance but this is not the case that's the amazing thing that the Brachistogon problem told us that they are the solution to this problem are the cycloid the path along which the particle which take the minimum path will be of something of this nature of this shape thank you